Dearest Nikki, since you were good enough to express your unmitigated delight and pleasure with the last painting I sent you, I'm sending you another one. I designed it myself. It was executed, of course, by Herr Krakfus, our court painter. I can't tell you how admiring he was of my design. It represents you and me standing sentinel over the apostles of the true gospel in the Far East. For that is clearly your great task of the future, to cultivate the Asian continent and to defend Europe from the inroads of the great yellow race. In this, you will always find me by your side, ready to help you as best I can. And two days ago, I got a report that the Japs are clandestinely arming the Chinese behind our backs. They are sure to rouse Chinese hopes and inflame hatred against the white race in general and will constitute a grave danger to your rear in case you should have to face a Jap adventure on the seashore. Begging your pardon for the liberty I have taken, I hope the Admiral of the Pacific will not be angry with the Admiral of the Atlantic's signals, who is always on the lookout on your behalf. Ta-ta! Best love to Alex from your devoted friend and cousin, Willie. Admiral of the Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to put it? I really don't like it, Nicky. It's worse than the others. I'll find a corner for it. How many more is he going to send? Can't you tell him we have enough? Well, it's a bit difficult. I wouldn't mind, you know, if he only represented himself on the book. Why does he have to include you? <laughs> Come in. The Minister of the Interior is here and other members of the Cabinet. Also the Archbishop of the Holy Synod. Yes, I'm coming. I'll, um, I'll see von Fleur first. My love, I took the liberty of asking the Archbishop to come and see us. About St. Seraphine? He's not a saint yet, Nicky. I think of him as that already. So do I. Our minds work in such harmony. Couldn't you see him first? Of course. Ask the Archbishop to come in, will you? Ah, oh, Constantine, thank you for coming. Do come and sit down. Now, you've heard of the hermit, Seraphim. Seraphim, oh, yes, yes. He, he died in some odour of sanctity, I believe. Uh, there are stories. Uh, I think he was a little... Uh, uh, well, uh, he lived alone for a long time. Uh, Your Majesty is well? Very well, Father. And you, I hope. He has been very much in our thoughts lately. Uh, Seraphim? Yes. We have spoken to many people who knew people who knew him. He was a very holy man, Father. Oral traditions grow exaggerated with time. We have found these stories very moving. They seem quite authentic. He healed many people, sometimes miraculously. My wife has found him a great comfort. Oh. Well, holy church can be a comfort too. Oh, of course. Of course. We would like to sponsor his canonization. Seraphim? Yes. Do you see any reason why not? Canonization in the eyes of the church is a very serious matter. People are canonized, and someone must be the first to suggest it. Yeah, but, but usually there's a body of evidence and belief that grows over the years. In this case... I would have thought if the emperor wishes it, that would have been sufficient. We're both convinced of his sanctity. We've... Uh, studied the matter, my wife has prayed to him. To a dead hermit? Many men were dead hermits before they became saints. But until a man is canonized by the church, I wouldn't have thought him a suitable object of prayer. I think it's what one has in one's heart that matters. He has been a very great help to me. And so I hope has our Lord. What the Empress means is, she has conceived again. Is it certain? Well, more or less. I'm very happy for Her Majesty. May God grant Russia her son, as he has granted the child. 
she feels in her heart, and I do too, that Seraphim has helped her, perhaps interceded for her. Her Majesty has conceived before without his aid. May I ask, has this anything to do with the French faith he left Philippe? Sometimes, Archbishop, one needs more than the image of Holy Church. One needs a focus for one's spiritual dedication. And Philippe suggested Seraphim. I am well aware of your dislike of Philippe. Not to mention the dislike and the rudeness with which he was treated by others. That is why he finally left Russia. But I found him a help and a comfort. The Emperor wishes to canonize Seraphim. I understand that. But it's a matter for the church. Of course, of course. But you'll put it to them. You'll um, express my strong desire. Now, you really must excuse me. My ministers are waiting. The Empress will tell you everything we know about Seraphim. I hope that you... Well, we should like him canonized. Are you all right? I wasn't made for the terrorist bomb. They missed me by a mile. What do they hope to gain from such actions? A new minister of the interior. That's what they got out of the last one. Strikes in schools and factories. Riots in the countryside. Assassinations. It makes me sick to read the news. Well, every country has its moods. Like a woman. Russia's in a dark one at present, but she'll come through it. What have you got for me there? A report, an investigation into the so-called Union of Liberation. Do I have to read it? No, sir. There's nothing in it you don't already know. Most of these organizations are the same. Lawyers, Jews, intellectuals. Only the names change a bit. We must keep a firm hand on them. We are. And the unions, they, they mislead everyone. Well, it's better to have the unions on our side than the nihilists. That way, the workers get their socialism. We all keep our heads. There's no trouble from the Marxists. Lenin has fled the country. Trotsky's in hiding. Most of the others are in cold storage in Siberia. Well, we'd better get this wretched Japanese business over. Would you ask the others in? In view of the situation, we must send reinforcements to the troops in Port Arthur and Mukden. I think that would be provocative. It would be cautionary. If war comes, it will be God's will. We have nothing to fear and we shall win, on the other hand. I don't want to provoke it. We shall have provoked it anyway by our refusal to negotiate seriously. I think we should telegraph an offer at once to the Japanese. What? kind of offer? To withdraw from Korea. We have no troops in Korea. We've got economic interests there, which are only a thinly disguised cover for political penetration. The Japanese aren't fools, and neither am I. My conscience is clear. I don't believe we have any need to make concessions. Morally, we're in the right. And if the Japanese are prepared to fight? Short, victorious war might be what Russia needs in her present mood. It may be neither short nor victorious. Oh, I think we we'll, we'll very soon teach the little men a lesson, but uh, let's try to make them see sense and reopen negotiations. Perhaps we could do it through the French. Grand Duke says you sent this side. Uh. The Japanese have attacked our fleet in Port Arthur without warning and without declaration of war. Three of our battleships have been sunk. What? All of it? All of it. The whole squadron? The whole squadron. Including the flagship? Including the flagship. Including the Admiral. Including the Admiral. All at the bottom of the sea. Those little yellow men. Don't wait upon formalities, do they? Well, Russia will have to send out the Baltic fleet to reinforce what is left in the Pacific. They'll have to go halfway around the world to get there. Yes, well, we'll offer to coal it. We can do that? It'll annoy the British. Mm. Sink the British. 
Japanese are their allies, not mine. Still, there are questions of neutrality. My dear Bulio, there may be questions of neutrality for you, but monarchs must stick together. I see this. I see this as far more than just a little war 8,000 miles away. This will be the decisive battle between Christianity and Buddhism, between Western civilization and Eastern semi-civilization. It will be the battle I so prophetically delineated in my painting. Our sympathies must be with Russia. It is vital that the Baltic fleet sail and wrest the mastery of the sea from the Japanese, and I shall write and tell him so. Now, well, Your Majesty, I don't quite see it as strongly as that. What is the object of German diplomacy at the present moment? To secure the peace of Europe. Oh, well, that's everybody's object. No, no, no. Our real object is to separate Russia from France. If we can accomplish that, we will never have to fight a war on two fronts. Therefore, we must encourage the Tsar. If he wins, he'll thank us. And if he loses, he'll need us. Either way, the French will be exposed for the fair-weather friends they always have been. Your Majesty, if we could get the Russians to sign a treaty with us. Ah, well, ah. That would be far more difficult. French would raise hell with the Russians if they did. But if we could persuade the Russians to sign first, wouldn't the French have to fall into line? Leave it to me. Ah, well, now, I think these things are best done through normal diplomatic channels. Why? Well, you know, since the Foreign Office is not allowed to edit Your Majesty's correspondence... I shouldn't dream of it. Then it makes it very hard to set the official seal on Your Majesty's efforts. Uh, well, do as you like. Uh, I must dress in five minutes. I'll convey your wishes to the Foreign Minister. Mm. Dearest Nikki, the outbreak of hostilities has had sad consequences for your brave navy, which have deeply moved me. How could it be otherwise, seeing that I am a Russian admiral and proud of this rank too? I can well imagine how sore your heart must feel that all your pains to secure peace were of no avail. I had an interesting conversation about the war with the French military attaché. I told him I thought it astounding that the French have not sent their fleet down to keep Port Arthur open till you send the Baltic fleet, which I'm sure you will send out soon, thus restoring to you the command of the sea. I pray heaven may shield and protect you and all your family through coming times. Warmest love to Alex and your mother from your most devoted friend and cousin, Willie. I nearly forgot. Look, that's the first one. What do you think? Seraphim. Oh, it's lovely, Mickey. If you like it, I'll tell them to start production straight away. I want to hand one to each soldier before he goes to the front. You are so thoughtful. Perhaps a trifle premature. Oh, the church will agree. I am certain of it. Saint Seraphim. He did help me, you know. Nothing and no one will shake my belief in him. <laughs> oh, will it be a boy, Nicky? <laughs> After four girls, perhaps God will say, let her have a boy. <laughs> oh, that would be... I sometimes believe it is because I have failed to produce a son that I am so unpopular. Oh, here. I won't listen to that. Everyone loves you. Oh, I feel so good. Despite the news from the war, I, I feel everything is going to come right. Russia's on the march. We have a divine mission to lead the world in a great spiritual resurgence. I know it. No matter what people say. All this unrest, what does it amount to? A few discontented intellectuals? 
Flavor was right. Russia has her moods like a woman, but she'll come through them, and you know why. Because Russia is one. Indivisible. With her czar at her head. Father Gapon? Yes, who are you? Danilov. This is Dolgorov Susanin. We work at the Fertilov Ironworks. Anilov, yes, I've heard of you. You tried to lead a strike there last year. That's right. But now we're part of the Assembly of St. Petersburg Workers. And we bring our grievances to you. But why did we have to meet here? We have union officers to meet in. I'm a very busy man, busy for you and for God. If you're too busy. I'm here. Ah, oh, yes, I remember now what the trouble was. It was over those new saws that were put in. They were being worked too fast. And they weren't properly guarded. We're discussing it with the directors of the works. What is there to discuss? There's been two accidents already and one man's been killed. I know. The directors allege carelessness. The saws are being worked too fast. such a long way to climb. Our struggle is against man's greed and avarice. Our struggle is against the employers. You dare remind me of that. What are the workers of St. Petersburg but my flock? What have I devoted my life to but the relief of their misery? I've taken up their agony as our Lord took up the cross I laid down when I'm dead. We need action, Father, not words. You it's... must have patience. Our lives aren't long enough. The men want to come out on strike. We'll come out. When the time is ready. The time is ready when the men are ready. Well, listen, Father. There are strikes in Moscow. There are strikes in Kharkov. There are strikes in the oil fields at Baku. Everywhere the workers are withdrawing their labor except in Petersburg. In Baku last year, the men struck and went back like beaten dogs. Their conditions were worse than what they came out with. Look, I'll tell you, Father. The feelings are running high. All the more reason to avoid a clash. You say your lives aren't long enough. But what of the men who died in Kharkov last year? Their lives were cut even shorter. They're better off than some of us. All such deaths are a violence and a shame done to God. God? God has forgotten us. Shame on you. Shame on you for believing such a thing. Have you sold your soul to the atheists? Go down on your knees. Go down on your knees. Beg forgiveness of him for that. Go down, Stepan Stepanovich. The father is right. Hear me, father. Forgive him his blasphemy, for he is hard pressed to his soul. Hard pressed. Things will improve, trust me. Say a prayer for the boy, Father. Is he sick? Now, what's the matter with him? What's wrong with him? <coughs> he slept and fell on a sword. There are still no guards on them. How old is he? He's twelve. Twelve, aren't you, my baby? Not even a man yet. No, not yet. <laughs> Say a prayer for him, Father. You take a risk coming to this quarter of the town. Oh, and I'm loved everywhere I go. Didn't you know? All the same, it is depressing. You should find other accommodation. It suits me. Start saving your money, or should I say, mine, for such frugal fare. It's more than most people eat. I'd have thought you'd have sent one of your minions. Oh, no, I regard you as important. That's why I come myself. 
If our little experiment succeeds, I shall see that it spreads. Will it succeed? That depends what you call success. Well, let me tell you what I call success. Peace and quiet. I can't put it higher or simpler than that. But then, of course, that is a policeman's point of view. What's yours? Oh, you worry me. And you frighten me. Look, why so antagonistic? I created the unions for you. I give you the funds to run it. I apply pressure in places you can't reach. Your motives are not the same as mine. No, but our objectives are to avoid revolution. Do you want the strike? A strike? I didn't give you the trappings of a union and expect you not to use them sometimes. All I ask you to do is to use them sparingly. Use them sensibly. I may not be able to much longer. Oh, well, you'll be no use to me. I don't pay a driver and crack the whip myself. If you can't do it, I'll find someone else. You may not be able to. Well, there's always some. One of your policemen. <laughs> do you know, I have enough policemen inside the unions to form a union of their own. But no, I'm not that foolish. You don't understand. Conditions are intolerable. This war has made them worse. Price is right every day. The employers become more brutal, more arrogant. The more profit they make, the more they want. Their greed is limitless. To them, the workers are just fuel to stoke a furnace with. I tell you, the seeds of revolution are being sown by blind men who will not see, deaf men who will not hear. If the Tsar only knew how his people lived. The Tsar is an autocrat. That means he gets his information from me and his instructions from God. But since God is invisible, he takes advice from the first things he meets. His wife, his mother, his stomach, and then me. Unless things change, we shall take our grievances straight to him. I wouldn't advise that. You leave us no choice, don't you understand? If you and your friends are too blind to save him, then I must do it before it's too late. You will do as you are told. Otherwise, I might let it be known to your union friends where you get your funds from. Then your life would be worth even less than mine. You see, for all your fervor, you are, after all, a police spy. It's the seal of his approval on your reign, ladies. Yes, Alex was sitting down to lunch. She hardly finished her soup when she rushed upstairs, and within the hour, uh, it was here. Can I see it? Of course, of course. Mama is with her now, but she should be out in a few minutes. What are you going to call him? Alexis. After the second Romanov, he was always my favorite. This will give the nation what it needs, a sense of permanence, of things going on in spite of setbacks, in spite of unrest. What have you decided about von Pleffer's successor? Well, I'm pressed on all sides to take Prince Mirsky. Well, there's a flabby hand, if ever I felt one. Well, I, I would prefer one. Pleffer's deputy, but everyone says that I should dissociate myself from the past. What do you really think about Mirsky? He likes to be liked. And a minister who fears the hatred of the mob will never do his work right. That's the principle I govern Moscow on. Yes, well, uh, let me see the boy. Of course. Oh, and by the way, Uncle, I'm sending the Baltic fleet out to the Pacific. Wise. Wise. Well, the Kaiser's been urging me to do it for some time, and he's right. We must teach those Japanese a lesson. In the end, the Tsar must decide. Who else is there? 
I'm sending you another painting executed by Herr Knackfuss, but designed by myself, since you were kind enough to say how much you liked the last one. It's meant to be allegorical and shows what the combined might of Russia and Germany could achieve. What a brave sight your Baltic fleet must be making on its long journey to the Pacific. And what a fuss the English are making over the incident at the Dogger Bank. It was perfectly natural for your Admiral to mistake those English fishing smacks for Japanese gunboats. His broadside salvos just show how alert he was. Of course, the English will make of it what they can. It seems to me that if you and I were to stand shoulder to shoulder in the face of English and Japanese arrogance, France would have to join us by virtue of her obligations to you. Ta-ta! With best love to Alex, your devoted friend and cousin, Willie, Admiral of the Atlantic. P.S. What a kind thought it was of yours to ask me to be godfather to your little boy. May he grow to be a brave soldier and a wise and powerful statesman. May he be as a ray of sunshine to you both during all your life as he is now, in the time of trial. The bleeding has stopped. What is it? What is it? We're not sure. But why should he suddenly bleed like that? Why? We shall have to carry out some tests. But from the navel for no reason. What can it be? His little arm is covered in bruises. He must have hit himself while in his cot. Children don't bruise themselves like that. What are you saying? It's too early. Yes, yes, of course, it's, it's too early, my love. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying! Oh, my love. Oh, no. No! Oh, no. <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> it's too early. Yes. Prince Mirsky to come back later, sire. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Do what you have to. God will take care of us. Sorry, I've kept you so long. I've brought with me the final document produced by the Assembly of Town Councils. It confirms your view of things, I suppose. It makes recommendations. I'm in sympathy with yes. A resolution was also passed. It expresses the belief in the dire necessity for constitutional reforms. Elected representatives. Some form of elected representatives to assist in the work of legislation. Will you read it? No. 
I told you at the time of your appointment, some reforms may be needed and will be made, but the government must appoint the men who frame the laws. It's my duty to tell you that I've never heard such an ominous sound from a city as I hear now in Petersburg. Such is the mood of the working people that the slightest thing will touch off a strike, and a strike a riot. Oh, you only see the workers in the cities. But Russia's more than that. It's the great mass of the peasantry or the backbone and lifeblood of this country. Sire, do you realize that there are 10 million wooden plows in use in the countryside? Do you know that 30% of the peasantry have no working animals to draw those plows? The true heart of a country is not made up of facts and figures. I tell you, I see things you don't see. Why, only the other day, a man and his wife came all the way from Siberia, walked, let me tell you, to bring my children a sable pup, a tame one, and you know how rare they are. But they wanted us to have him. Keep him, little father, they said. In our village, they'll only kill him for his fur. Let your children play with him. We were very touched. Alex and I. I will uh, leave the document here. Well, I'll read it. I didn't say I wouldn't, but I won't accept resolutions. We're going through a difficult time. I have much on my mind. The war is a strain on all of us. It's not just the war. <laughs> the English! <laughs> are making a great fuss over the help the Germans are giving us, claiming violations of neutrality and heaven knows what. God, what masters of hypocrisy they are. It was time they were taught a lesson. Well, ask my secretary to come in, will you, on your way out? Send a telegram to His Imperial Majesty, the Emperor of Germany. Dear Willie, I have no words to express my indignation at England's conduct. The only way... The only way, as you say, would be that Germany, Russia and France should at once unite upon arrangements to abolish English and Japanese arrogance. Would you like to lay down and frame the outlines of such a treaty? As soon as it's accepted by us, France is bound to join us. And what a coup that would be. Didn't I say there might be some value in monarch speaking to monarch? I'll deal with it at once. Uh, draw it up yourself. Let's keep the foreign office out of it. Germany. Austria, Russia, and France. Even Bismarck never thought of that one. Dearest Nicky. These men were dismissed for refusing to work as directed. They were dismissed as troublemakers. Oh, they are troublemakers. It's you and your unspeakable greed that causes the trouble. For months we've been pressing you to meet us. We have met. Met. And talked, and that's all you've done. Dragged your feet and put us off. In the name of Christ, meet them halfway. I think... I think perhaps it would be better to discuss this alone. No. Then there's nothing more to say. We have machinery for settling differences. But you do not settle. You talk and talk and talk and talk till the men despair. Go back to work and we'll talk again. No. This time it's we who will not talk, not talk, not talk. Look at them. It's 20 degrees below outside. They've no fuel to put in their grains. They've no food to put in the bellies of their children. But look at them. They'll stay out until they rot. And so will I. I warn you, Gap. No, I warn you. We'll take to the streets. 
We'll go to the Tsar. But by heaven, you'll hear from us again. General Fulon, what on earth is happening? I'm as bewildered as you are, Prince. No, I knew there was tension in the factory districts, but uh, is Kokotsov here? He's on his way. But what is happening? Oh, a small dispute in the Putilov works has mushroomed into the biggest strike we've ever seen in St. Petersburg. Everybody's out. All the factories and mills are closed. It's estimated 130,000 men. But why? Uh, the thing has exploded. I don't know what to do. There are mobs parading the streets. Well, where is Father Gapon? Out of his mind, if you want the truth. He's talking of a storm. So much for police socialism, the brainchild of a madman. The Tsar has received proposals for a treaty with Germany. With Germany? Has he taken leave of his senses? The Tsar has received proposals for a treaty with Germany. It cuts right across our treaty with France. He asked the Kaiser to draft one. He thinks we can sign it without submitting it to the French. Does he know nothing? I sometimes think he doesn't even know enough to be afraid. What am I to do? If the workers come out in the streets in force, am I to order the troops to open fire? Where is Gapon? Making speeches. He wants the Tsar to receive a deputation. He's writing him a letter. Squeeze them, shot the money pack. Squeeze them dry. Ring them out. There's a drop left in him. In him, and him. Catch it before he dies. It's worth ten rubles. Not one drop of human spirit will they leave you to call your own. They're theirs. You belong to them, not God. You were born to be the cattle of the rich. And as cattle, they'll use you to the last part, blood, bones and hides. Even the milk from your wives they'd steal. If they didn't need your newborn calves for their meals. Who decreed that the many should toil and labor for the few? The land was God's. They've taken it. And all the fruits of the earth have gone to them. Even the strength that God gives each man for himself, they've taken and set to work for their profit, not ours. I say enough. But what can we do? You ask, what can we do? We can go to the Tsar. He'll listen. He'll understand. He too is a man. He too has children. Let's take our wives and our children. Let's stand in the square before the Winter Palace and call to him. When he reads our petition, when he hears our cries, will he not come onto his balcony and weep with us? Can you doubt it? Weep with us, I tell you, for he is a father too. Shall we go? Not in anger, but in sorrow. Shall we go? Shall we? Shall we? Does anyone dare come with me? Yes! yes! Where? To the Tsar! Say it again! To the Tsar! And again! To the and again! To the and again! And again! That was taken long before any of you were born. Hmm. What about this picture here? Have you seen this before? No. I think he's okay. going to sleep. Funny, buddy, isn't it? Oh, my love. Here, put him in his cot, won't you? He's wet. Don't disturb him. <laughs> Tuck his little arms in tight. Who's that? Yes, you do. You are Daddy. naughty. That's it. <laughs> we shall watch him every moment, every day. I believe there is a reason for it, Nicky, and it will be revealed to us. I'm certain of it. Don't bend the photos, Tatiana. Sorry, Papa. <laughs> Sire, I must speak with you. You know I won't be disturbed while I'm at tea with the children. It is very urgent. Never mind, my love. The, the children have finished their tea. Come on. Come on, my darling. Oh, you get little one. Oh. All right. Mm -hmm. Sit yeah. tight. Off you go. You're right. the funny one. Are you going to be a good girl? Go to sleep tonight, properly. Promise? Bye, Daddy. There's a good one. Off you go, then. Will you take tea, Prince? Thank you. <sighs> Sire, 
Sire, the situation is... The situation is very grave. I've just heard that Father Gapon and the others intend to lead a demonstration into the square of the Winter Palace. When? Tomorrow. On Sunday? They want you to receive a deputation and listen to their grievances. But we're not there. I think it may be as well to consider being there. The General Fulon is of the opinion that the size of the crowd may in itself create disorder, although it's not intended. Then it's Fulon's business to control them. Uh, sire, the city is... The city is at boiling point. I've tried to convey this to you during the past few weeks. And now we are doing and will do all we can to control the situation. Why haven't the leaders been arrested? Uh, General Fulon does not feel that he has enough police to make this possible. There are at least a hundred thousand people involved. Then he must get help from the military. I have already arranged for that. But it would be far better for you to appear on the balcony. That is why they're coming. They want you to receive them. I've talked the situation over with Lambsdorff and Kokotsov, and they both agree it. it's by far the most sensible solution. I don't know. Sire, I beg you to receive them. Their belief in you is the motive for the whole demonstration. Prince Mirsky, what nonsense is this? Capitulate to a mob? Is that what you're asking my husband to do? Uh, Madame, there is no capitulation. Oh, I think there is, Prince. People do not come into the grounds of our home without an invitation. And if they do, they must be put out. Uh, sire, the I beg this is right. In any case, Prince, do you not think it a piece of criminal insolence for working men to consider approaching their sovereign in person? Uh, Madame, they are not in the mood to be taught manners. Sire, I won't receive such a deputation. Under the circumstances, I would appear to be surrendering to a mob. I'm surprised that you should advise me to do so. Thank you for the tea. My love, call Prince Vasilchikov. I think his cavalry might be of use at the Winter Palace. Yes. Yes, you're right. The presence of cavalry will have a calming effect. You, a priest, a man of the church, defy the authority of the church? My allegiance is to God and the people. And where is your allegiance to the church? Has that been thrown away in your newfound arrogance? I warn you, Capon. If you proceed tomorrow, we shall disclose your connection with the police. And I shall deny them. There are receipts with your signature on. Do you think I'd hesitate to label them as forgeries? More lies. Has the truth too been sacrificed to your revolutionary creed? I preach the revolution of Christ. Men are dying in the thousands in the Far East, and all you do is press icons in their hands and bless them before they go to the slaughter. It's the church that's lost the truth, not me. I appeal to you. Call off this demonstration. No. I've written to the Tsar. He knows we're coming. Thousands of us, not with hate in our hearts, but with love. Singing hymns, waving banners, men, women and children, your flock. The sheep you left on the hillside whilst you fed and warmed yourself around the fires of the rich. I give you one last chance. If you do not seize it now, the responsibility will be yours to bear through all eternity. It will be as nothing to the responsibility the church will bear. I see. I see that it goes on. Yes, I've seen him. I did my best to persuade him to appear, but he'll have none of it. There's nothing more I can do. Yes, I'm alive to that, but I can do nothing to prevent it. The matter is not in my hands. A beautiful day, but very cold. After lunch, I took a very long walk. As Lambsdorff insists on showing the Kaiser's draft treaty to the French before we sign it, I have given up the idea altogether. Since yesterday, there are strikes in Petersburg and all the plants and mills and troops from the neighborhood have been called in to reinforce the garrison. Mirsky called to discuss measures he thinks should be taken. I feel sure that in the end, good sense will prevail. 
Little father, last Sunday was a disgrace. The work of agitators who tricked the people with wild promises. We want you to know that your people love you and are loyal to you and your family. Thank you. But I must tell you this. Strikes and riots only excite the unemployed to start disorders which will compel the authorities to use force. I know the life of a workman is not easy. There's a great deal that can be improved. But for a mutinous crowd to bring its needs before me is criminal. Have patience. You must be just to your employers and take account of the industrial conditions of our country. I believe in the feelings of our working people and in their loyalty towards me. And because of it, I forgive them their crime. Virtually the whole Baltic fleet sunk without trace. Eight battleships, seven cruisers, six destroyers. A journey of 18,000 miles taking six months to complete and the Russian fleet ends at the bottom of the sea within an hour of reaching the Straits of Tsushima. The war is over. This is it then! This is the moment to catch him. He'll be in the doldrums. Poor Nicky. But it's right. Germany and Russia, it's right. I shall invite him to meet me at my hunting lodge. Just the two of us, no ministers, nothing. I shall begin by reminding him how France, his ally, has done nothing whilst we have done all. And then... And then... And then, my dear Bulot, the talk turned to England and how the French have flirted outrageously with her. The Tsar hung down his head dejectedly and said, That is too bad. What shall I do in this disagreeable situation? I felt then that the moment had come. I reminded him of that draft treaty we had discussed a few months ago. Oh, yes, to be sure, he said. I remember it well, but I've forgotten the contents of it. What a pity I haven't got it here. I possess a copy, I said, which by an extraordinary chance I happen to have in my pocket. He caught me by the hand. Show it to me, please, he said, and his dreamy eyes lit up. I drew the envelope from my pocket and laid it before the Tsar. He read it quickly. I sent up a fervent prayer to the good God that he would be with us in this moment and guide the young monarch right. Then the Tsar looked up and said quietly, This is quite excellent. I quite agree. My heart beat so hard I could hear it, but I pulled myself together and said quite casually, Should you like to sign it? It would be a very nice souvenir of our meeting. He ran his eyes over the document again and then he said, Yes, I will. I flung back the cover of the inkstand, handed him the pen, and he wrote in a firm hand, Nicholas. I signed my name under his. He folded me in his arms and said, I thank God and I thank you. Bright tears.
tears stood in my eyes. It was an historic occasion. We must forget it. Forget it ever happened. It cannot be done. Who are you? People, you, you tie everything up in endless complications. Sire, you have signed a treaty that requires us to defend Germany if she goes to war with France. And for 15 years, we have been committed by treaty to do the opposite. I didn't read it that way! But that is the way it must be read. And that is the way the French will read it. I have to agree with Count Lambsdorff. Your ministers cannot sign this treaty. That's how you feel about it. Do as you like. I've done my best for you. I can't do any more. I'm sorry. This has been the most terrible year.